all about. Well, thank you for coming tonight, also to prayer meeting and um, in our time together. Uh, if you have a, a green sheet, those of you who have a green sheet, uh, it's more for you. I mean, it's more for me than you. Uh, okay, well, not really, but it just helps me uh, not to get off on rabbit trails. But um, real quickly, let's, uh, if, uh, in Janu- uh, uh, Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17, um, and then a review uh, um, here. And last time, we really spent a lot of time in this because it's so sad. Uh, we looked at a, the man, King Asa. You're, you're familiar with him. And he had such a wonderful testimony. He loved the Lord, and uh, he did what was right. And, and the nation was blessed uh, because this man uh, did what was right, and he encouraged people to do what was right. And what a blessing that was. And, but we really wish that was the end of the story, but that's not how it ended up. He depended upon God to beat the uh, Libyans and the Ethiopians. But then when Basha, the king of Israel, he was worried about attacking him. Instead of going to God for, for help, and just as he did before, instead he, he uh, tried to uh, 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 join, uh, he tried to, he compromised basically by going to the, the king of Syria instead of to the Lord. And, uh, and, so, and then God inflicted him with a, an illness uh, and his disease on his feet. And even in that, he didn't ask God for help. And so, sadly, he ended up being a, a negative example. And there on the, page one, the application, we will utterly fail if we rely upon ourselves and others and not upon God. So you and I, we, we need to rely upon the Lord. And by the way, you coming here to prayer meeting tonight and praying with and for each other, you know, you are honoring God. Uh, you know, it sounds funny, but... you're you made God happy. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're, no, really. Uh, you know, I used to tell my children when I was growing up, and if they disobeyed, uh, and disobeyed us, I would say, you know, uh, you know, when you disobey us, I said, you know, you hurt God's feelings. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and you don't want to hurt God's feelings. No, I don't want to hurt God's feelings. Well, it's true. I mean, and yeah, when you and I sin, we hurt God's feelings. He said, where's the Bible? Grieve not the spirit. You can't grieve a thing. You can only grieve a person. And so when, so, but anyhow, but you're coming because we're dependent upon God. We think of people need comfort for their lost loved ones. They need wisdom and guidance and medical issues uh, to ease the pain, to strengthen the body and these type of things. So <clears throat> uh, real quickly here, our text, and the Lord is our only hope. The Lord is our only hope. And we look at these key verses. I'll read them and then we'll hopefully get to them in a little bit more detail and study. But Here's a, some key verses from this passage. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. What a great verse. Oh, wow. And then just the two verses later, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And then Jeremiah himself says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. And then I'd like you to look at the very last page uh, for, maybe, maybe, maybe we could maybe sing this tonight later. Um, but what a, a tr- I, I looked at several hymns about talk about hope. Now, you know the Bible, and it talks about hope, whose hope the Lord is. It's not a hope so, like I hope that'll happen, hope, but it's a no so. It's a sure, it's a certainty, a certainty in the Bible. And uh, the writer here, Norman Clayton, he, he unbelievably gets the truth of the gospel across in this song. It's so wonderful how. Uh, these songwriters and many many of them have uh, gone through such trials and difficulties not not all all of them uh, for every hymn but many of your hymns that you and I sing that we just love uh, you it's unbelievable the history of them I think Pastor Elstock did a, a series of that a couple of years ago it was a real blessing um, but it talks about uh, the salvation what and and I'll just read these words and and, and you'll you'll see it. The, how much he gets, how much he has uh, teaches salvation in this. My hope is in the Lord who gave himself for me and paid the price of all my sin at Calvary. 
For me, he died. For me, he lives. An everlasting life and light he freely gives. No merit of my own is anger to suppress. My only hope is found in Jesus' righteousness. And now for me he stands before the Father's throne. He shows his wounded hands and names me as his own. His grace has planned it all. Tis mine but to believe and recognize his work of love and Christ receive. For me, he died. For me, he lives. An everlasting life and life he freely gives. Wow, that's tremendous, isn't it? And uh, look forward to just thanking him when we get to heaven and for his love for God and his love for music. All right, Jeremiah 17. Would you follow with me on Jeremiah 17? And as I read some of these verses from Jeremiah 17, uh, basically just two simple questions when I read this. Number one is, what was Jeremiah told and what, did Je- what was his response? What was Jeremiah told and what was Jeremiah's response? And as we've seen before, and I love this, Jeremiah is, in other words, he's a, he's a prophet. He's a spokesman for God. Not a hard message, uh, uh, you know, like they never heard it before. Basic, obviously, he's talking some, some prophecies about the future, what's going to happen in the future. But he's emphasizing over and over again, simply get back to the Bible, the law of God, the law of Moses, the truth of God's word. Over, get back to the Bible, get back to the Bible. But then... I love it because it's very personal with him. Then he talks about, the, gets a, in other words, he and God, and he lets his, he lets his feelings be known. He, 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 you know, we call him the weeping prophet, but he wants to maintain that personal fellowship, that personal walk with God. What a great guy. And, uh, but so, would you follow me? Let's begin at verse 7, and, and we'll go uh, and just follow along with me. What was Jeremiah told, and what was his response? Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and his hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by waters, it spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so is he that getteth riches not by right, and leave them in the midst of his days, and at the end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel... All that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me... I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Let them be confounded, in other words, ashamed, that persecute me. But let them not be confounded, let them be dismayed. But let not me be dismayed and bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by which they go out, and the gates of Jerusalem. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all, uh, and all, the, Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Take heed. In other words, give attention to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, 
Neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of the cities on the Sabbath day, but hallow, in other words, make holy the Sabbath day to do no work. Then there shall enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses. And they and their princes and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places about Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin, from the plain and from the mountains and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices and meat offerings and incense, bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. But if you will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath, not to bear a burden, entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof and shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and it shall not be quenched. All right. And the Lord had the blessing to the reading of his word. All right. Well, let's look at this now a little bit more in detail, shall we? Would you notice, first of all, here as, uh, on page two here, we have the commendation. In other words, he's commending him. He's praising him. And here, if you notice in verse seven, it says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. The idea behind the word uh, blessed is continually the person that is blessed who relies upon God. That's the idea behind it. Continually blessed. You are continually blessed, the person that is relying upon the Lord. And then it says this, um, and whose hope, that means whose anchor is steadfast in the Lord. This is what it's talking about. That confidence, that hope is that confidence, that assurance, that trust is in the Lord. And I couldn't help but read it. And he, then he says, well, this is what that person who's continually being blessed by the Lord, this is what's going to happen to him. Isn't that neat? It, it really tells us. This is what's going to happen. The person that's going to be like, that continually relies upon God and whose trust and confidence is in the Lord. This is what it's going to be like. Now let's notice with me, please. Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of the drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. They will be prosperous. They will be fruitful. Who is going to be fruitful? Who is going to be prosperous? The one that continually relies upon the Lord. They are going to be greatly blessed by God. And I couldn't help when I read this passage of Scripture and maybe say, boy, that sounds like, hmm, that sounds like another passage of Scripture. And that is in Psalm 1. We turn real quickly to Psalm 1. We're probably really most familiar with Psalm 1. And what it is, is Jeremiah probably was alluding to this, going, hey, I remember back in the Psalms. And, and so let's turn there, would you please? You turn to Psalm 1. Now remember, a psalm was originally what? Help me out. A song, wasn't it? Okay? And so Psalm 1, uh, we don't have um, uh, an inscription. In other words, who exactly? Uh, but just for the sake of, let's say David wrote it. Okay? It doesn't say that, but like it does in the other, some of the other Psalms. But let's just say David wrote this. Or, but what it is, it's the preface you know what that not not a preface uh, you know I, I used to say preface but so that's pre actually that happened to my wife in, in English class in high school <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, but no it's a preface okay in other words it sets the precedent for all the other psalms okay and and and, and what it is now I'm going to read this now he, as we notice this now Notice how the psalmist, again, the contrast. Remember last week, the con we see this over and over again, the contrast. You, 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 and, and here, this is the godly, those with God, and the ungodly, those without God. There's a big difference. Those with God and God is with, and then those who are without God and God is not with. See what I'm saying? There's a contrast. Let's see what the contrast is. Notice, here it is. Blessed is the man... What does he, there's things that he does not do. He does not walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the what? Scornful, the mockeries, okay? There, there's almost a progression here. Uh, as we see, he doesn't walk with those in the counsel of the, the wicked, the ungodly, those without God, nor does he stand in the way of sinners, he don't want to be, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But what does he do? See, this is over. You know, the Bible's a bunch of no's and can negative and can't. Well, there are no's and there are negatives, all right? And that's true, but it doesn't leave you there. But here's what we, what we are to do. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he doth what? Meditate there in day and night. Over and over again, he meditates upon the word of God. And if he does that, if he does not do certain things, and he does do certain things, notice what verse 3 says with me, please. He shall be, whoa, listen to this. It sounds, boy, it's like Jeremiah. A tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf all shall saw not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. There you go. Now notice the contrast. Those without God. Those that don't know God. God is not with not with them, and they're not with God. Notice the contrast with me, please, okay? Verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaffed. Well, they're, they, that's really not good for anything, right? The chaffed, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly, those without God, shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Well, you know, you read this, this one little uh, psalm with six verses, and say, I mean, I, I, I mean, I read that, and I said, well, I, I, I don't want to be ungodly, because I don't want, you know what I'm saying? I read that. I want to be God, godly. I want God with me, amen? I want the Lord to be with me, okay? You know, I remember, and some of you, I'm just going to date some of you, okay, how many remember Nikita Khrushchev. Do you remember him? Okay. Where's Brother Wilson? Is he here? He's not here. Okay. I'm not saying that he knew him, but what I'm saying. But anyhow. Yeah. But remember Nikita Khrushchev. Some of you, well, you say, what are you talking about, Pastor Cole? Well, he used to be a leader of the Soviet Union. And, and uh, he got up in the United Nations on the platform. He takes his shoe off. And this is a man, okay? And he sti- and, and, and he, he hits in the podium like this, and he says, we will bury you. That's what he said, you know? And I'm a little kid on the old black and white TV, and I, seriously, I remember looking up, and I remember saying, I looked at my mom. I said, Mom, I don't want to ever be like that man, full of hatred in his heart. Can you imagine? We will bury. See, a lot of people, they, uh, you know, th- this, we need to teach the young people this. I mean, it's, it's real. Communism okay it, it's still going on i mean oh yeah there's something it's still but you i mean i don't want to be like that the the fill your heart with hatred i man i never want to be like that i don't want to be like him you know and uh and let me let me about psalms like how can you and i meditate i love a pastor uh brother uh Cooper had meditation. Remember that he wasn't. It wasn't transcendental meditation. They taught. Okay, it was for biblical. <laughs> the summer he had a series on. <laughs> it wasn't the yoga chant, Ram yoga chant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, okay. So, but but no. To, to go and uh, how do we do that? How do we do? You know, the Bible says psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to what, the Lord. Now let me. If I, I I'm, you fill in the blank. Okay, see the USA in your Chevrolet. Oh, my wife says that right. Up. All right, how many knew it was Chevrolet? Well, about half. Well, maybe maybe seventy percent. Okay, now it's probably been sixty, sixty-five years, at least sixty years since you actually heard that first time. Am I right? Early six. You see what I'm saying, right? And yet you can remember it. If I say to you, you wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with. That's interesting. <laughs> no, no. Isn't that interesting? That's, all right. But, but, you remember, right? You remember. Yeah, I was sitting next to him. <laughs> <laughs> you were sitting what? 
but sitting next to me in school. <laughs> oh, <is that? laughs> they went to the same high school. So, but but no, seriously though, it, it, the Bible says this in James, the first New Testament book written. Is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. James five thirteen. Is any Mary, let him sing psalms. You know what that means? You yourself. You yourself. If you're having difficulties, you pray. If you're joyful, you sing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Okay? And so, <clears throat> we see this. Well, let's charge onward, shall we? All right, now we come to a, a, a very interesting uh, situation here because it's almost like the opposite, okay? But that's the way the Lord has it, and that is... <clears throat> The uh, now we see the commendation, but now as we look here, uh, let's look uh, the treachery of one's own heart. The treachery of one's own heart. Notice what he says: the heart is deceitful above all things. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the heart, yeah, above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know the heart? Now, what do we mean by the heart? Okay. What do we mean? Well, it's, you know, think of this now. I know it's not a perfect analogy, but they think of, the, of our physical heart, okay? Think of your physical heart. It's a, sort of ironic. It's a little left of center. <laughs> sort of funny, but, uh, but I don't know. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean you should that be that way or so, politically. But no, but in other words, in other words, it, it's the, it, without the heart, you ain't gonna go too far, right? It's the center of your existence, that's what it is. It's the center of your life. It's the center of your being, the center of your being. And, and what, is the, what does the Lord say? The center of our being is like, well, sadly, uh, it says it's, it's what? It's deceitful. It's actually, the word is like slippery, all right? It's sly, not very pleasant. And it's, it doesn't only just say that. What else does it say? Uh, desperately, what? Wicked, Okay desperately <clears throat> it's uh, wicked means used nine times five times it's translated incurable one time desperate one time desperately wicked one time woeful one time sick it's, and, and, uh, and it's wicked in other words <clears throat> incurable desperate woeful very very sick very very sick whoa that's not a very nice picture of our the center of our existence naturally. You see what I'm saying? Naturally. Now, the Lord knows us, doesn't he? Because it says this. What does it say? Help me out here. As we say at the next verse, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. I know what you're really thinking. I know what you're really thinking. I know your motivation. I know your will. I know your purpose. And, and that is very, very challenging, isn't it? That God knows. Um, uh, and I try the reins, the idea, I'm seeing what's really going on. God knows all about you, all about me. You know, first of all, that can bring great conviction, like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? God knows what I'm thinking, what I'm saying, what I'm doing, how I'm feeling. He knows all about us, okay? That is very convicting. But also, it's very comforting, isn't it? Because that's the wonderful thing. Now, this season, we can celebrate every day, but this season, when we think of, of Jesus coming in, uh, not to, into existence, he has always been, but he became what? Man. He became, you ever hear chili con carne? Mm -hmm. Chili with what? Meat, exactly. Incarnation. You see, God becoming flesh, but without sin. Okay? Without sin. He totally understands everything you and I go through. See, in other words, God knows that one of the attributes of the Lord is what? I'm all what? He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's all present. But through Jesus becoming one of us, a human being, but without sin, he totally can not only know it cognitively, intellectually, but experientially. He knows what you're going through. He knows the devotion. He knows what struggles are. He knows what loneliness is and sadness and disappointment. Okay, he knows what uh, sadly pain is because of dying on the cross, so it can totally, totally, and absolutely emphasize us, uh, empathize with us. And then notice with me, please, <clears throat> where it also says that 
uh, to give it to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. God has, knows why we do what we do. Now, what I'd like us to do is turn to Proverbs 4.23. You know this verse by heart. Keep thy heart with all what? Diligence, okay? Well, what am I to do if my heart, if my heart is uh, desperately wicked, Okay. Well, of course, we realize we need a new heart. <laughs> we need a heart transplant. That's what we need. We need a new heart. And that comes through salvation. That comes through salvation. And, and, uh, but, but notice the, uh, in Proverbs, keep, uh, Proverbs 4.23, this is important. Keep thy heart with all diligence. W my thought life, what I think, what I choose to do, how I feel, okay, how I feel. Keep it with all diligence. What's that word keep? That's a command. Keep means to guard, to watch, to watch over. And again, the heart of the center of my thinking, the center of my will, the center of my emotions, all right? Now, if I said to my wife, honey, I love you with all my mind. <laughs> uh, well, that'd be good, but <laughs> no, I hope that. But that, you see what I'm saying? It's like, well, yeah. Uh, what, um, I think I read somewhere, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Isn't that interesting? With all thy heart, with all the center of your very existence were to love God. Isn't that interesting? With all your, because the heart includes it all, doesn't it? Inner mind, mind, will, motion, thinking. And, uh, but, but the guard what we think, the guard what we hear, the guard what we see, just, just to be on guard. That, that's the idea. Watch. Be careful, okay? With all diligence, uh, that means a, 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 actually the idea is a guardhouse, diligence, a watch, observance, a prison, a guard, a jail. With all, just be careful with everything you think of on why because what's what's the next phrase say Be, what's it what's it say <clears throat> uh, for out of it are the what issues of life whoa because if you think about it in other words <laughs> it sounds funny if you think about it before we do anything well actually we're in trouble if we don't but, if, but before we do anything we think about it okay now, I thank you for all coming tonight. Now, why did you all come here tonight? It wasn't because Pastor Colton's preaching. No, okay. no, it, it, no you, you came here because, oh, when you thought about it first. It's Wednesday night. It's prayer meeting night. Okay, so I want to I wanna be a blessing, okay? I want to be blessed. Hopefully, you are blessed. But you want to be a blessing. So you think about it, and you come. So you thought right. And you've done right, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to feel right. <laughs> no, that sounds funny. That's, that's very vital. In other words, to think right, that will help us to do right, and then what will be the result? We'll feel right, okay? Let me, example, how many, how many here have to mow your own lawn? Anybody here? You still got, okay? All right, well, okay. All right, now, first of all, before you mow your own lawn, right? You have to think about it, right? Remember a couple of years ago, a summer, it seemed like it rained every day, didn't it? Mm -hmm. A couple, what was it, 2019? Uh, remember, it seemed like it rained every day. You remember that? You know, you mow your lawn, and what, two days later, oh, it had to be mowed again. Okay, so you have to think about mowing your lawn, okay? Then, oh boy, you know, the neighbors, you know, I, I, you know I'm going to look like a hay field. So you go, and you mow your lawn, right? Now, I want to ask you something. After you're done mowing, how do you feel? Right, thumbs up, right? Hey, I'm done, yeah, yeah, until the next time, right? No, but why? Because first of all, you thought about it, then you did what was necessary, and now you feel what? You feel good. So in other words, you feel right. So that's why it's vital, for out of it are the issues of life. What we think is vital, and that's why you and I have to get alone with God every day. You say, I already know that, but let me tell you, that's what we need Jesus himself said, you cannot live by bread alone, but by every what? Word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's not just the physical food that we need to exist physically. We need that spiritual food, the word of God, to exist spiritually, to exist spiritually. All right, 
So, uh, but um, real quickly, I'd like you to turn to, to uh, Mark 7. Okay, there's a, a couple scriptures here. Mark 7. <clears throat> and this case here. They, they, Jesus said, look, the problem is the heart. Why do people do what they do? Why do they do what they do? I mean, they're, they're full of hatred and, 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 and everything. They, they need a new heart. They need a... Um, they're, they're thinking on the wrong they're thinking the wrong way all right but that's why we have what does God say what do, how does God want you and me you and I how does he want us to think about situations and in Mark 7 notice what it says and when he had called all the people unto him he said unto them hearken unto me every one of you and understand there is nothing from without a man that entering in can defile him but the things which come out of him those that there defile the man. If any have ears to hear, let them hear. Remember what that means. Uh, well, every, most people have ears and most people are not deaf. In other words, you hear to add here. Okay, what are, what are we to hear? And when he entered into a house, his disciples asked him concerning um, this parable. And he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever think from without and earth into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out the draught, purging all meats. And he said unto them, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. And from our natural self, our natural sinful self, we are naturally ungodly. You see what I'm saying? We are naturally without God. When we're naturally without God, this is the results. God's not with us, we're not with God, all right? For out of the heart of man, okay, proceedeth evil thoughts. There it is. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evils come from within and defile the man. All these evils come. Defile the man. So there is the case of sin against mankind. And that's why Paul, in the book of Romans, he says the, more, the pagan world is condemned before God. The moral man is condemned before God. The Jewish man, well, he has the law, but guess what? By the law is the knowledge of what? Sin. He has the law. He's guilty before God. And that's why we need a Savior. There's a little kid's song that says this, I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we need Jesus. Amen. In other words, the cure is Jesus Christ. That's why we need a substitute. That's why we need him to take our place. Now, what I love about uh, Jeremiah, remember it's thematic. It's thematic. And I'd like you to turn just two other scriptures and we're done. And that is the Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24. What's the answer? Remember what Jonah said? Salvation is of the what? Lord. Remember? Salvation is of the Lord. It's, we need the Lord. And he's there for us. And in uh, Jeremiah uh, 24. In other words, God doesn't just leave them there. Remember, we're, we're reading now, it's talking about, remember we read about the Sabbath, and it said, well, that was God's covenant relationship with Israel. There's a lot of truths, two truths of principles in there, and we'll look at that, Lord willing, next week. But I want you to notice with me, please. Notice Jeremiah 24, starting at verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, like these good figs, Show shall I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans, that's the land of the Babylonians, for their good. For I set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and will build them, and will not pull them down, and I will plant them, and not pluck them away. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart, with their whole existence. 
from the center of their very beings. They will return to me. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You know, if you have, and there's a book, isn't it? If you have the heart, you have everything. If you have your child's heart, I'm telling you, you got your child, right? You have your child's heart. How many of you, how many of you growing up, all right, you know, you obeyed, well, maybe we're scared of getting spanked, <laughs> all right, some of, you know, or, but how many of you growing up also were not so much maybe scared of, of getting punished, you probably deserve it, I deserved it, but you know what, probably a lot of you wanted to obey your parents because you didn't want to disappoint them. Think of that. You didn't want to make them sad. Amen? That's what I like my kids to do. <laughs> no, no they, they wouldn't make me sad. <laughs> okay, you know. uh, but, it, but, it, it, but it's really true. It's really true. And, and, and we don't want to make God sad. We want to make him glad. And you and I, when we live for God and we do what's right, guess what? We're making God happy. Yeah, we're, we're making him glad. And that's what we want to do. And, and, and God is there for you, and he's there for me. And, uh, oh, our times. Real quickly, Psalm 13. It's not in your notes, but Psalm 13, and I'm done. You have been so attentive, I appreciate it. I love what David does over and over again. And folks, Jeremiah does this. Paul does this. What do they do? They take their problems to God. They take their situations that they face in life to God, no matter what they are. And they're very candid with God. They don't say, well, I, Lord, thank you. I don't have any difficulties. I don't have any struggles. No, they, no. they're thankful for, uh, uh, they're thankful no matter what happens, obviously, but they're very candid because they're going through difficulties. They're going through trials. They're going through tests. They're having, going through pain and stuff like this. So here we have in Psalm 13, it's only six verses, but here we have David. We know it's because it, and he's, I, He's the, it says the Psalm of David, okay, that's actually verse one in the Hebrew, by the way. Notice it says, how long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? He's saying, Lord, hey, I, I'm, I'm your son, I'm your child. Uh, you know, uh, how long are you gonna go on? You, you forgot me, right? You ever feel that way? Like, oh, I don't know. I know God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but maybe you, there's struggles in life and you say, like, well, David did. Then he says, how long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Boy, he's really pouring out his heart to God, you know. In prayer, he prayed. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? In other words, and some scholars believe this is talking about his trial with Saul. Can you imagine trying, a guy trying to kill you, you know, hate, hating you and trying to kill you? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But what does he end up saying? But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Lord, I'm so thankful I can always come to you. You are the same. You are the Lord. You don't change. And New Testament believers, we can say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a joy that is. I and the result, I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. You see his trust. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord God. That's the idea behind that. We are continually blessed when you and I trust and rely upon God in our lives. And we will be blessed. And guess what? We'll bless other people. When you live for God, you're not only a blessing to yourself, but you're a blessing to others. Thank you for your attentiveness. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, we just skimmed the surface here of some of the wonderful truths of the spiritual diamonds in Jeremiah. He's really giving and repeating and going over again these wonderful truths. I thank you for these dear folks. Continue to bless them. I think of the season of the year coming up, Lord. What an opportunity to tell people the real meaning of Christ's birth. He came to save that and seek that which was lost. He came to be the savior of the world. He came to 
uh, save his people from their sins. Please help us as to be those instruments to that end. Thank you again for your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.